Hi, my name is Rich, and today we're going to talk about the Bard class in the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons. It'll be a short introduction, how to set one up, what you should do with your first five levels, and we're going to decide if the Bard is the right class for you. So, let's get started. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. I update the channel twice a week and you should be able to get videos regularly. This is part of the character class series, where I take a deep dive into the first five levels of each character. So if you're new to Dungeons and & Dragons and have not decided which character class you want to try yet, check out the description where there's a playlist to my other videos. First up, we should ask, what is a bard? Well, the bard class is a combination of music and magic. They use their musical instruments as a focus to be able to cast magic spells to buff up the party, and uh, they're one of the most flexible classes in the game. You don't have to be a musician to be a bard, but it does help. In some of my other games, I've seen bards being used as stand-up comedians or bakers and artisans. As long as you have a skill you want to focus on, thematically it's a great way to play a bard. Now, in the party, the bard is a great jack-of-all-trades. They're very good at plugging the holes that other party members may have. For example, if your party doesn't have a healer, the bard can use healing word in a pinch. Or if there is a skill check that needs to be made, the bard's better than average at doing skill checks. They're not a master of any one skill, but the fact that they can heal, they can be the face of the party, they can get up close and fight, or they can cast spells from afar, it makes them a great character class to pick as a late addition, or if the party has the other bases covered. Now, what are the best races to pick for a bard from the player's handbook? I would recommend a half-elf, a tiefling, or a halfling, because they all have bonuses to charisma, which is going to be your primary skill when making a bard. When making a bard, some of the good backgrounds to choose are sage, urchin, and criminal. I would avoid entertainer, because the bard's skill set already covers the bonuses you would get from this background. So, at level one, you get spellcasting, Bardic Inspiration and Access to Light Armor. The Bardic Inspiration is a bonus action and it's the core of the Bard's skill set. The Bardic Inspiration at level 1 only has a limited amount of uses and it lasts for 10 minutes, so you should be very conservative with when you need to use them. When choosing skill proficiencies, this is where the Bard really shines. You can choose three from any skill on the character sheet. So consult with the rest of your party to see if there are any glaring weaknesses in their skill sets. At level 1, you have access to some cantrips and level 1 spells. For the level 1 cantrips, I would recommend Vicious Mockery, Friends, Minor Illusion and Light are all solid choices. Vicious Mockery is the only cantrip the bard has access to naturally that can deal damage. It doesn't do the best damage, but giving disadvantage to something else really helps out in battle. I would avoid True Strike and Blade Ward because they're not very practical. With True Strike, you could cast a spell spending an action and get advantage on the next round, or you could just attack twice, where you can deal twice as much damage. So for the spells at level 1, I would recommend Healing Word to help keep your party members alive. If your primary cleric goes down, Healing Word will help save the day. Fairy Fire is a good area of effect spell and can help out your melee fighters. Sleep is a stealthy spell that can be used on multiple enemies. And Thunder Wave is a good area of effect damage spell, but it does have its drawbacks in the loud noises it can make. I would avoid Illusory Script or Long Strider. Those spells are a waste of a spell slot in my opinion. Now, let's move on to level 2. At level 2, you get the skill 
Jack of all trades. You get Song of Rest and you get a third spell slot. Jack of all trades lets you add half of your proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't include your proficiency already. Now this is fantastic because it can help you out in every situation, from things like rolling for initiative, to counter spells and dispel magic, and also with constitution saves as well. Song of Rest is a good skill to have, but it all depends on your dungeon master's style of playing. If you have a long rest between each battle and each fight, then it can be made a little bit redundant. When you're having a lots of short rests, or you, for whatever story reason, you have to keep going for a long time. A Song of Rest can help heal the party and nobody's going to refuse some free hit dice. At level 3 you get Expertise, which is a fantastic way to beef up your already large proficiencies. And by the time you hit 3rd level, you'll have an idea of what your character wants to focus on. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make using either of the chosen proficiencies. Also, at third level, this is a great power spike because you get to choose your own subclass and you get second level spells. In the player's handbook, you have the choice of two subclasses, the College of Law or the College of Valor. We'll go into detail about those subclasses later on in the video. For level two spells, I would recommend Heat Metal, Invisibility, and Silence. Heat Metal is a great and humorous spell that can uh, deal a lot of damage and can help get you out of very precarious situations when you're in a more urban setting and there are lots of heavily armoured guards chasing you all of the time. Invisibility can help you avoid battles altogether sometimes and has great roleplay potential as well as mechanical potential. Silence is not just a great way to stealth your party through a section but it can also be used offensively against a wizard if they're silenced, then all of their spells that require verbal components are cancelled out. I would avoid the spells Magic Mouth and Animal Messenger because there are better alternatives available. Magic Mouth is very situational and almost redundant unless you seek out a way to deliberately use it. And Animal Messenger is a very niche spell. If you're in a more rural campaign, then it could be useful but the cleric should have better ways to communicate long distance. At level 4, you get the choice of boosting up your stat points, your ASI, or you can choose a feat. And going down the feat list, I've seen uh, Lucky is a always a fantastic feat. Defensive Duelist is great for a more melee focused bard. Inspiring Leader can help buff up your party and give them extra hit points which is always valuable, especially for the weaker classes like Wizard. And Magic Initiate is a great way to get yourself a Find Familiar spell, for example, or maybe try to snag one of those Eldritch Blasts. The Eldritch Blast from the Warlock character is a cantrip that can be based on charisma, and as a bard you should have that in spades already. At level 5, your Bardic Inspiration dice is upgraded from 1d6 to 1d8. You get the Font of Inspiration skill, and you get access to level 3 spells. Font of Inspiration lets you reset your Bardic Inspiration every short rest. Again, it's up to how the DM wants to play it, but getting to use your Bardic Inspiration more liberally is generally a benefit to the whole party. Now, for the level 3 spells for Bard, I would recommend you take Tongues, Tiny Hut, and Clairvoyance. With resting, Tiny Hut can be a lifesaver, and should be used in every long rest to ensure your safety. I would avoid Glyph of Warning because it's easy to replicate the same effect by other means. Every spell slot you have is precious as a bard. You don't get a lot of opportunities to change them up. Now let's move on to the subclasses. There's two subclasses available in the player's handbook. First off, we're going to cover the College of Law. College of Law is a great way to be the skill monkey of the party, where you have access to bonuses on a lot of your skills. It gives you three more bonus proficiencies and the Cutting Words ability. Cutting Words lets you use your Bardic Inspiration instead of positively on your party. You can apply it negatively to other enemies. Now, it's worth noting if the creature is immune to being charmed or can't hear you, then the spell doesn't work. 
And it's worth noting, when you hit level 6, you get additional magic secrets that really helps you adapt to the party's needs and gives you spells from any class. The College of Valor is a more melee-focused bard. When you join the College of Valor, you get access to medium armor, shields, and other weapons. You can also use your bardic inspiration in combat to inflate the damage dealt by anybody that has bardic inspiration, or defensively by boosting up their armor class in a pinch. And then at 6th level, you get an extra attack. Being able to attack twice a turn is very powerful, and really puts you on the same level as a lot of the melee classes like Fighter or Barbarian. So in summary, the Bard is a great fill class. They can use their skills to help the team. They are one of the most powerful support classes in the game. They can be used as the face of the party and help negotiate social interactions quite easily with their natural charisma bonuses. And they're great for veteran players, helping out a new group. The veteran can always help out when needed and let the players experiment with their new skill sets. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hopefully I can speak to you again in the near future. If you have any questions about the character class or any other questions about the channel, leave them in the dis leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Well, I hope you have a nice day and I'll speak to you later. Goodbye.